Today, by using only one photo, we're gonna create this. Hey there, my name is Ali. Today's edit, we're gonna make it by using only one photo. We'll start by creating a new canvas. I'll go like 3500 by 2500. Okay, we have a landscape orientation. And this photo is the one I'm gonna use. Let's make sure it's like wide enough. Put it below. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna do, I want to expand the sky. So I'm gonna press Ctrl T. And I'm just gonna make sure like that our landscape is on the middle line of the canvas so we can like add sky there. The, then now we have to rasterize the layer and then I'm gonna make a selection but this one I have to make sure it's feathered. So I'm gonna add like five feather and then I'm gonna make my selection here. And if you see I overlapped a little bit of the selection with the sky and it's feathered then I'm gonna press shift and f5 it will open the fill menu I'm gonna make sure it's on content aware and everything is like that color adaptation normal 100% and I'm gonna press ok this should automatically like calculate what's missing and we'll try to add a sky it's not gonna be perfect we're gonna overpaint on it but it should be good enough Okay, as you see, it's like, it's not like perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my brush and I have here some cloud brushes. I'm going to use them and I'm going to use them actually with the clones or no, I'm just going to stick with the brush first. Then I'm going to hold alt and sample some colors here and then start adding some clouds here and there. And of course, try to use different variations, different colors, just to make it look random and natural. Then I can use this one actually. I'm gonna just increase the opacity so it's faster. Yeah, these cloud brushes, if you're like wondering where I got them from, it's just like open Google and just type free cloud brushes Photoshop. You'll find plenty of them. And now let's take this one and let's start like over painting some clouds. And let me use this dark color with like some big clouds, something like that. Okay, I guess now the sky looks good. One thing I need to do is I'm just gonna take like a brush, make sure it's like a normal brush with white color. And I'm just gonna add some clicks here in the middle so that this part in the middle is the brightest. Okay, now we need to like start playing around with the mountains here. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool Make sure the feather is maybe like 1 or 0, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna select this mountain. It doesn't have to be accurate, like, but if you have time, just make it more accurate so it looks better. But here, for the sake of tutorial, I'm gonna make it fast. Okay, after I make my selection, I'm gonna hold Ctrl and press J. What this did is it gave me a duplicate of what I made in the selection. So now I'm going to press Ctrl T, then go to the warp. And then I'm just going to make this mountain look like something like from an alien planet or something like that. Okay, I guess that looks good. We like created a tall mountain, but let's like try to play around more. In this like uh, tutorial, what I'm trying to do is... I'm trying to make like some pointy shapes, something like that. So I'm going to cut this mountain to make it look like 
it's pointy, something like that. I'm gonna mask it, then I'm gonna press Ctrl I to like take the invert. And I'm gonna do the same here, paint with black using Alt Backspace. And maybe another one here. Okay, this doesn't look good. Let me do it like that. Maybe fix it even more. Okay, I guess it's good now. Let's apply layer mask. And then let me select only that one. Like this. And make it a little bit. Let's first separate it. Right click. Layer via cut. Now it's on a separate layer. I'll make it a little bit smaller and put it behind this one. Maybe warp it a little bit. Something like that. Make it more pointy. Let's take this one also. Warp it a little bit. And I actually want to warp it from the below. Yes, something like that. Okay, now we have our first mountain. I'm gonna like select the two layers and press Ctrl E. It will merge them. Then I'm gonna add a layer mask. I wanna blend it with the part below. So I'm gonna take a brush and using like maybe 40-30%, I'm just gonna erase the edges so it blends with, with what's below of it. Okay, looks good. We're done with the, like the first mountain. We can actually, I'll add one small thing here. I want to make like feels like that one is behind the other mountain. So after I made my selection, I'm going to lock transparent pixels. So if I paint anywhere, nothing will do an effect except on the mountain. Then I'm going to take this like light blue color and I'm just going to paint. If that's too strong. I'm going to use like 5% opacity maybe and just paint here on the edge so now it looks like it's behind of it but I guess we need to do it with black because it should this one should be throwing shadow on that one cast shadow so something like that like I used blue because it's like fog color but I guess the shadow will be stronger from this this okay let's jump to the next mountain I'm gonna use this one let's do the same like we did in the first one okay I missed a part so I'm gonna hold shift and just add the part I missed here again it doesn't have to be perfect but I don't want this other light sky color blue so I'm just gonna use that Control J again so I have it on a separate layer and then I'll go to the warp and just stretch the mountain make it look okay now it's time to fix it a little bit to make it look pointy like we want so I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go like too strong with that one. Something like that. Add layer mask, control I to make it the inverse. Okay, this doesn't look pointy. Then paint black on the mask. It looks pointy now, I guess. We can always like go to the brush and paint with white and then try to fix it again and you can use the polygonal lasso I guess it will be easier because I don't have like a, a tablet use it like that oh I did the opposite I guess I need to paint with oh I made the opposite selection so I press ctrl shift I just like select then uh, select inverse inverse and then using the brush black brush i'm gonna paint the outside part okay if i wanna like 
at this part what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the clone stamp and just stamp from here and add there okay I have to be standing on the layer and I have to press Control shift I again to invert it again then just stamp to add the missing part and let's fix the mountain below again we need to make it sharp that's too sharp I guess something like that is good and let's give it a natural light falling down in black on the mask okay now I'm gonna like apply layer mask then I need to separate them so I'm gonna separate this one like that layer via cut so now we have this one on a separate layer let's put it below and I'll just move it behind and I'm gonna paint black on its edges like I did I'm gonna paint with overlay so it doesn't like remove my pixel it only makes it darker I'm gonna use like low opacity and just paint so now it looks like it's behind that one and I want to fix this one a little bit using the work tool I want to make it more like leaning to the middle part okay this one you remember when I said like the sky I don't want the blue from the sky we have some here so I'm just gonna get rid of it really quickly like that and let's try to add some variation let's go something like that and delete so it's like more like interesting okay I guess now we're done with the mountains let's uh, merge them or just let let's leave them actually and let's try to add more like custom shapes I'm gonna like I duplicated that one I'm gonna make it small and I'm gonna play around with the work tool with it something like that and I'm gonna duplicate it again put this one behind that one make it smaller maybe flip it horizontal warp it again something like that it looks nice actually it looks like some sort of a gate okay I merged wrong layers I guess I, I want to merge this one with that one okay so I'll merge these two and let's put them let's actually first I'm gonna duplicate this one so I have a copy of it put it behind and I'll make it like much smaller maybe here okay now it looks fake of course because as you can see if we zoom in the mountains here are too faded and this one is too strong so I reduced the opacity so first thing I'm gonna make my selection on that part then I'm gonna layer mask and then press ctrl I so now I have the opposite now I need this one to be the same color as this one so the first thing I'm gonna press ctrl M it will open the curves I'm gonna pull the blacks up so now we have the same value the same like level of gray but then we need to fix the color so I'm gonna press ctrl B it will open the color balance I'm gonna go to the highlights I'm gonna add some cyan because this is like cyan color maybe some blue now if we zoom out it's looking good but still not perfect so I'm gonna press ctrl click now I have a selection of this layer I'm gonna take my brush make sure it's on normal because we made it on overlay before and with some low opacity I'm gonna hold alt and sample this color and just paint over this one with that color so it like blends in even better so now we have our first shape here it looks nice let's bring that one back again let's try to play around with it I'll show you another way to play around with shapes it's in edit puppet warp now I'm just gonna like put points a lot of points here and there 
to make it fixed from below and then start pulling the shapes to create some custom shapes you want okay now these looks these look like some interesting rocks but I don't like this one I need it to be make it more sharp so I'm just gonna add selection like that and jump to the clone stamp and just clone stamp the same for this one I want to make it sharper then clone stamp I press s is like the hotkey for clone stamp and I made them like the way I want and this one I'm just gonna like fix it a little bit okay so now we have our shape let's put it somewhere else maybe here let's make it like narrow tall okay we need to put it let's say with the edge of that mountain so I'm gonna go to the lasso tool I'm just gonna make my selection here I'm gonna make it actually using an interesting way so now I made my selection I'm gonna like do a layer mask then I'm gonna unlink it and like move it where I want so now it's like it's locked but I need to like expand my layer mask a little bit by painting white on it now whenever I move like the original layer it's gonna be stuck in that mask so I, I fix it wherever I want I like it here actually now let's close the link again let's do the control M curves fade it out to and control B and in the highlights let's add cyan maybe in the mid tones also cyan and blue and control click sample this color and start painting so it blends so it looks like it's one thing okay now they look really natural it looks nice let's start adding like some huge shapes in the background well I'm, I'm, I'm gonna draw actually some of them let's try something like that it doesn't matter you can always like change its shape later on make it like sharper or like softer what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add any color here just to get like my selection and I'm gonna start fixing it okay it looks nice but it's not too sharp I guess I need to make it sharper okay I guess it looks good now I'm gonna put this one like the very far away in the background like the first furthest thing away but let me warp it a little bit first something like that okay I guess it's good now if I want to add texture to this one it's like solid color if I want to add texture I'm just gonna select it then I'm gonna go to the clone stamp make sure it's on all layers and then I'm gonna steal like some texture from that mountain then sample again and steal just adding some texture so it doesn't look like it's just a solid color okay so now we textured our whole thing we need to place it let's put it behind just somewhere here and let's draw the mask let's say we want it to be like behind that mountain 
Uh, I, I, I'm thinking of a better way using the magic wand. If I make a selection, okay, it helped me a lot. It made a very fast selection because there is contrast between these two colors. And let's, like, now it's easy to increase the selection size. Okay, and then I'm gonna stand, which layer it is? This one, I'm standing on it and I'm adding layer mask. Now, if I close the link and move the original layer, it's gonna be behind that one. So I'm thinking, now I'm looking like here on the navigator, the top right. So you can see like the whole composition or you can do it by just zooming out also. It's the same so you can see the whole composition and thinking of like the whole thing together. Okay, let me close the link. Let's try to fade it so it looks natural. I'm gonna control M and just fade it. Control B and just add the cyan. Here, this one is like a little bit blue, I guess. It's more blue than cyan, this color. If you're like, if your eyes can detect what color is it, just open like the color menu and stand on it. It's here, somewhere between the blue and cyan. And if you look from top to bottom, it's almost in the middle. That's its value. So if I click here, you see the difference between this one and that one, what's happening here and there. Like the color here is more saturated. So I'm going to press Ctrl U, add a little bit of saturation. And let me control click and sample this color with the brush and just paint, paint it here and there, paint it over just so it looks, it blends better and looks more natural. There is this edge actually, which I don't like. So I'm going to stand on the layer mask and I'm just going to using a soft brush. I'm going to using white. I'm gonna like remove that edge so it blends better. Yeah, now if we zoom out enough, you can't detect like if it's like not real or not. Okay, I guess now if we look at the overall composition, it's a little bit heavy on the left. So we need to like put some object here on the right to balance that hue shape we have on the left. So let's play around with that shape. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Apply layer mask. I'm going to flip it horizontal. And I'm just going to warp it. Just destroy the shape actually. Something like that. Okay, and let me put some of them here in the middle, small. These are gonna be like the first, furthest in the background. Let me just fix it a little bit. I'm gonna erase some parts. Which I believe like are extra. And let me just make it very small. Something like that. And using the magic wand again. Which one is that layer actually? It's layer 4. Okay, I'm gonna add layer mask. Move it around. No, you need to move this one, not the mask itself. <coughs> okay, then control M. Fade it out. This one is gonna be like too faded. Something like that. And maybe a little bit of cyan, so it matches the environment. Okay, we have here like the shape. Let's try to draw like some more interesting shapes. I'm gonna draw something like that, maybe. And I'm just gonna sample this color automatically and alt backspace. Uh, it's not too sharp actually because on my lasso I have one pixel feather so I'm gonna make it zero I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna redraw it again Let's say something like that and Okay, the same color. Let's paint it. 
One more trick I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold Alt and just copy that mask on top of it. So now we have the same mask applying on them, both of them. And let's like warp it around, play with its shape. I'm gonna make it like thicker from below. Okay, let's add some more shapes. I'm gonna add a little bit of it here. Uh, I'm gonna paint white on the layer mask. Sorry, on the layer mask, paint white. White, then on this one, I'm just gonna sample this color and paint with it. Okay, let's add another shape. I want this one to be behind of it. I'm gonna go something like that. Let me try the polygonal lasso so, so because it's like sharper. Let's go something like that with the same color I'm gonna paint. Now they look like one object so what I'm gonna do is on this one I'm just gonna paint with white like that. Okay. No, that's too strong I guess. I'm just gonna fade this one a little bit make it a little bit brighter. So it looks like it's behind of it. And on this one, I need actually... To paint some here and there to make it blend with what's below of it. Okay, so now we have, we are, we have like our custom shapes. Let's go for the last shape. Uh, let's try something like... Try something like that. I don't know, I don't like this area. Let's make it like this. Okay, I guess it's good now. And let's make another one next to it with the shape. Ah, no. Okay, let's add a new layer and let's sample this color and paint, put this behind almost everything. Then let's make our selection here, make sure we're selecting everything, nothing is missing and standing on that layer, I'm gonna add layer mask, we can move it around. Uh, I don't like this one actually. Okay, that looks better. Okay, it looks good now. Now we just need to fix the edge by painting white on the mask. So they blend a little bit together. Okay, now we have like plenty of custom shapes. Now it's time to add like the last shapes I wanted to add which is like the floating lands. Let me start with this one. I'm gonna flip this one vertical. Let's make it something like that. Let's erase that top area and let's draw I'm gonna draw it on a layer below of it. I'm gonna sample this color, draw it, then I'm gonna go to image adjustment, brightness, contrast, make it a little bit, uh, I don't know, brighter. Yeah, brighter, I guess. Okay, so now we have it. Let's merge these two together. So now we have like our first, okay, I merged wrong layers, sorry. Let's merge these two. So now we have some sort of like a floating land. I don't like this, it's too like strong, let's try to make it something like that and then paint with that color. Okay, and let's give it some 3D, 
let's darken this area let's darken this one too and like using the dodge and burn if you're on the dodge you hold alt so you burn and if you, I'm holding alt now while like coloring if I remove alt and just click it's gonna dodge making things brighter not darker okay so now we have our first floating land let's fade it out a little bit because it's like it should be further in the background and reduce the opacity okay always look in the navigator to see like a better picture of the whole thing okay let's now draw one of them floating lands let's go something like that it's okay if it's like if the proportions are not right at the beginning you can always like I wanted this one to be like a little bit okay and let's make a selection of something like that and I'm just gonna brighten it up a little bit because this is like the top area and let's make it like smaller I'm gonna warp it and pull out I want it to be look like it's flying or something like that okay these are two like fat I'm gonna make it narrower and let's add our 3d I don't want the effect to be so strong and obvious it's like so far away so it should be like a very subtle effect because when things go far away you don't see like too much contrast let's flip that okay let's try to put it here okay control M make it a little bit more faded and reduce the opacity a little bit this one is closer than this one that's why I left it I didn't fade it out so strong like that one okay now I want to like do my final floating land or maybe like two more I don't know I'll see let's try to draw something really sharp like that okay and just add any color this one it's gonna be a little bit difficult because this one is gonna be close to our eyes so if it's close this means I can't leave it like that with a color I need to add texture so I'm gonna take some texture from that mountain by using like our clone stamp tool and just like steal some texture and using the lasso tool let's draw its top part and also I'm gonna take some texture from the same mountain but before removing this selection I'm gonna go to image adjustments brightness contrast make this one like a lot brighter and I'm gonna add some blue to it maybe just to make it look different Okay, I'm gonna sample again texture. Okay, let me sample texture from a different mountain and let's make it brighter. Okay, if this is too sharp, I'm just gonna take the blur tool. And I'm just gonna blur the edge because it's too sharp. okay now this one I want to make it wider smaller something like that let's think where I should place it I'm gonna place it here I want to work this area a little bit actually 
or let me not warp it, let's draw it. I want it to be something like that. And again, I'm gonna sample from this. Okay, now it looks good. Let's give it the 3D look. I always tend to like burn the edges and the places where I want them to be like it's going inside and dodge the places closer to the camera so this curve this is like a curve so that part on the edge should be like far away from the camera and that part here in the middle should be brighter because it's closer the same applies here, let me like dodge the middle part, same here, and let's burn, I just hold alt to switch from like dodging and making brighter to burning. Okay. Okay, I guess now it's good. But now we need to like blend it. It looks too contrasty. It looks too close to the camera. I need to push it back. So I'm going to do that by fading it a little bit and reducing its opacity a little bit. I want this one to be like my main one. So I'm going to press C for crop. Click to make sure it's on the like the rule of thirds. So I'm just going to place it here. Okay, now let's take an overall look of everything. Okay, let's add one more close to the camera. I'm gonna take this one actually. I'm gonna like pull it on the top. Make it like as big as possible. Something like that. This one is gonna be a little bit tricky because it's like the biggest so it needs to be like more accurate. I'm gonna erase like try to change its shape. Make sure you're on lock transparent pixel because I'm gonna sample some texture. I'm gonna sample from the ground actually because this should be like some sort of a ground. So sampling from a ground is logical. Okay, then I'm gonna blur a little bit the edge so it doesn't look too sharp. And I wanna change its shape a little bit. I don't want it to be the same like that one on the top. And of course, it should be like the highest contrast because it's the closest to the camera. Let's play around a little bit with its shape. I have to close like the lock, the lock on the locked uh, on the pixels. So I'm able to draw outside of it. And some dodging and burning to the edges. Okay, since this one is like very close to the camera, I wanna like give it some sort of an effect, which is the blur. I'm gonna go to the blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna blur it a little bit. No, that's too much. That's also too much. I guess that's fine. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's make this one actually bigger. Okay. Uh, this one looks 
close to the camera. I'm gonna reduce the opacity even more. Okay. Now I'm, what I'm doing is just like taking an overall look on what I did. I believe this area here is a little bit empty. So I need to fill it with that mountain. Then I'm gonna move this one. I'm gonna unlock it so I can move it without like removing the actual mask. Yeah, so we can see it. Okay. It's still too contrasty, I believe. And it lacks some blue color, so I'm gonna like add some cyan and blue. Because like when things go further away from the camera, it should go more blue because of the atmosphere getting between it and the and your eyes or the camera. When it gets closer, it should be warmer. If you see naturally here, this one was too warm and it kept going like cooler and cooler as we go further away. <clears throat> okay, the last thing I want to add like some sort of a, a model maybe or like a man or anything here. Uh, I don't think I have like a photo or maybe I do let's uh, I'm looking for a photo for a man okay this one this, this was the one I used okay let's make it a little bit smaller let's put it on top of everything I make this selection then I press E, click, rasterize it. Then I hold Control, Command, and Shift and I to select inverse and press backspace. Now we only have like the man. Let's take our magic wand and let's just like. Usually I like I like to cut like people using the the pen tool, but this one is gonna be like too small. The man, we're gonna make him too small, so the details are not gonna be like visible. So it doesn't matter if we do it very like roughly. When this happens, just press Control I. It will give you the inverse. Okay, let's apply layer mask. Now let's make the size of the man. Uh, let me zoom out to see. This is too huge, I guess. still too big okay i guess now we're good okay i don't like what this man is actually wearing so i'm just gonna like do a selection something like that and then i'm just gonna clone stamp his jacket to be filling the whole area I want to make him like wearing some sort of a cloak. Okay, then I'm... I need to get rid of some parts of his arms, I guess. And this cloak should be like that. Or maybe, no, that's too much. It should be... Something like that. And here we erase like an important part, I guess, his arm. Okay, so now if you look from far away, it looks like the man is wearing a cloak. We can even make it more interesting by dodging and burning because the cloak should have like places where it's going in, flying, places where it's out. So just dodge a little some parts and burn the parts next to them. So it looks like the cloak is like like the air is moving it <clears throat> okay let's give this man like a staff or something <clears throat> maybe something like that and let's paint it with like... i don't know what happened okay let's put it behind him and let's give it a dark color Something like that. If we look from far away, it looks good. Okay, let's merge them both together. 
And now let's fade him into the environment. This is like control M. I'm just fading him into the environment. Maybe some opacity to make him fade even better. Okay, and now we're done. I guess we're done with like the composition thing, the whole of it. Now it's time to play around with the curves and the color grading. I always like to look in the histogram to understand what my photo is all about. The left part from the histogram is dark. The right part is the bright areas. As you can see, we have like a lot of pixels in the dark and a lot of pixels in the bright and we have very few like in the middle tones so what I want to do is I want to take these very bright areas pull them a little bit to the mid tones and the dark areas to the mid tones so I'm gonna go to curves I'm gonna take my dark points pull it up my mid tones I'm gonna make them a little bit darker and I'm gonna here pull my whites the very bright areas a little bit down something like that then press ok I want to see like the whole thing in the navigator. Let's close and open, see what we did. You see when we like removed the white, it was too bright. When we reduced the very bright parts, it brought a lot of details to the sky, which made it much more interesting. Now I need to color a little bit. Let's go to the curves. Let's go to the red. I want to add like some orange color coming from the background. And in the blue, I'm going to add some yellow. Then in the green, maybe a little bit of magenta. On the red, I'm just... This is like I'm adding cyan to the shadows. A little bit of cyan. Maybe some green also in the shadows. And some blue. I'm doing like opposite colors to make it more contrasting. Let's do another curve one. This one is like gonna be like just brightening everything up. Just, I'm gonna brighten the highlights and I'm gonna go to the red, add a lot of red and a lot of yellow. And this time I'm gonna press Ctrl I. Now I made it invisible. Now if I take my brush and paint white on it, it's I'm gonna bring it back to visibility. So I want this strong light to be here in the middle. Only here in the middle part. So now we have like some sort of red color bright area coming from here in the middle. Okay, let me darken the whole image down, something like that. But then I'm gonna paint black in the parts where I don't want to be dark, in the middle, just so the eyes get attracted to these areas. And let's color, go to gradient map. I'm just gonna use any one and fix it. Let's go with that one. We have three colors, <coughs> shadows, midtones, highlights. Mid-tones, let's try to make it some sort of green color, like green cyan color, something like that. In the shadows, I'm gonna make like a light blue, or let's try something yellow-green. And here I'm gonna add orange in the highlights. Of course, it looks horrible now, but we're gonna like fix it. I'm gonna reduce the opacity very strong and change it to soft light. So now we see the before and after. We added some green tint in the shadows. Okay, what else could we do? Let me think. Uh, I guess it looks already good now. I always like to keep zooming out and in to like take a, a bigger picture of everything. Let's add a photo filter. I want it to be a little bit warm so I'm gonna stick with that one but now the sky is too warm so I want this one only to be affecting the dark areas I don't want it to be affecting the very bright areas so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click the layer and now we have this blend if option the blend if works by choosing whether you want it to be affecting your whites or blacks. Here it's affecting everything. So I'm gonna move the white here and I'm gonna hold alt and fade it out. So now it's not affecting except the dark areas as you can see. It's not affecting like the background. Okay, I guess we're good now. Let me lock. Okay, one thing I just noticed, like when we made the sky very red, these ones look now fake, 
So I'm gonna press Control B, give them some red to match like the sky. Control B, make them like red. Because we made them like using a blue color first and then we made the sky more red so they don't look very like realistic. This one I'm gonna leave it because it should be like close. This one now looks a bit fake, okay. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna like on this one, I want only this one. I'm gonna take like a brush and using a red color I'm gonna sample this color and just paint some of it on its edges like that just to try to make it uh, doesn't look good I'm gonna control M fade it out even more and just give it more some magenta and red. And reduce, maybe reducing the opacity a little bit of all of them will make them like blend better with the environment. Okay, now this is much better. The last thing I'm gonna do is I wanna add some fog in the whole image. So I'm gonna do, do a new layer. You can do that by filter. Render, then you go to clouds, it will give you like clouds, you can control T, make them like smaller, hold control alt and shift, make it like that, so they look like they are like on the landscape itself, okay let me pull it up a little bit, and I'm just gonna use a cloud brush to delete some of it, we don't have like this very sharp edge in clouds, so I'm just gonna erase. And then with a very low opacity, I'm just gonna add some variation here and there. And just reduce the opacity. Uh, I'm gonna actually control U and desaturate it. I don't like the red color in it. And maybe control M, make it a little bit darker. Something like that. So, it looks more natural. Uh, it's too strong still. I'm gonna reduce its opacity even more. Yeah, so now we have some sort of fog. We can even add more clouds by like using these clouds we have here and there. Let's just make sure it's almost white. You can play around with your brush to like give variation to the shape of the clouds. So these two, what they did is that, uh, the, these two, we had this shape, then we added like some clouds to the whole thing. The last thing I'm gonna do is hold control, alt and shift, then press E. It will merge everything onto a new layer. So now I'm gonna go to camera, a filter, camera raw filter. And then I'll edit the whole thing in one shot. Okay. First thing, I always try to go for the O2 to understand what's happening in my colors. So it went to the blue and to the magenta. This means my image is a little bit too yellow. So I'm just going to move it a little bit just to the blue. Okay. Then uh, let's add some whites, bring down the highlights. Let's add some blacks, bring up the shadows. And in the clarity, it's up to your taste. You can make it, make it like very clear like that. Or you can make it like soft. I'll make it soft on this one. Then to the FX module, you can 
either like dehaze or haze the photo which is like removing the a little bit of the fog I'm gonna dehaze it a little bit add some vignette vignette is like the black circle around the photo uh, then I'm gonna press ok so this is like the before and the after the camera raw I like the blue actually even more so I'm gonna go again to camera raw filter I'm gonna go to the effects add again some vignette okay so now I guess we're done with today's tutorial if you have any questions or suggestions make sure you put them in the comment section below thank you